I just pray that whatever may be go- somebody may be going through, that you just be right there and guide them through it. So, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. One of the amazing things that we have when we are able to come into the house of the Lord is that uh, we can spend a few moments in, together and worship Him and Tonight, I'd like to welcome our guests, and I'm thankful that you are here. And, and we're coming to the close of summer. School starts here in just a few weeks, and on September the 11th, uh, in-house, we will be asking and praying over all of our teachers, all of our administrators, uh, those that work in the offices, um, our students going back. There is so much to be uh, thankful for and for those that are in house and you know you know we have not one but four different teachers that teach in the public schools and we're thankful that that they go in and they do what God's called them to do the other thing I want to remind you about is this coming Saturday we'll be having our uh, summer concert out here in the, the garden area and wow, Worship Without Words will be here. And that's a group of individuals from about 10 or 12 different churches. They come together and they perform. And we're just going to have a wonderful time. Come hungry. The, the youth group will provide uh, a fundraiser. I believe they're going to have some barbecue sandwiches and chips and different things for you to have. It's supposed to be beautiful weather that night. So come and enjoy it. Uh, and if you're wanting to give unto the church, joy box in the back, and you can also download Tithely app and search for Spirit of Life or go through our website and on our PayPal. So let's pray. I spoke today with, with a half a dozen different ministers, and every minister I talk to is going through something. So in-house, how many of you are going through something? How many of you know that God is able? I spoke with one individual, and he says, I don't see the end of hope. He says, I know God is able, but I just don't see it happening. And I reminded him, we don't walk by sight, but we walk by faith. God is able to do above and beyond what we even can imagine. And God's faithful in that. Amen. So, Heavenly Father, as we come before you this evening, we are thankful that we're in-house, that we get to uh, find ourselves together, learning of your word, applying it to our lives, that, that we can spiritually grow, that we can become mature within you as we apply scriptures, the, the word of life, the bread of life into who we are. Lord, I pray for every hand that went up that they're going through something. God, for those that are watching on Facebook, watching online, Lord, that, that they will feel, Lord, that, that as they pray out to you, God, that you hear the prayers of righteous men and women, Lord. It says scripturally that it availeth much, Lord, and we are calling upon your name, the name above all other names, for you are worthy. And Lord, we exalt you this day. So God, reach down, touch those that need a physical touch. Those that need that, uh, well, God, that healing relief that you can supply. Lord, we go to the doctors and we go to their care, but Lord, we know that you are the ultimate healing for our body. Lord, I pray for those going through heartaches and trials for relationships. I, I pray, Lord, that they would align themselves with you, God, to where that vertical relationship is correct and right before you, Lord, and all their horizontal relationships will come into subjection of who you are. God, I pray for the finances. 
God, for those that are needing a miracle in their lives, Lord, you've seen that they've been faithful. So, Lord, bless them and touch them. And, God, open our hearts, our ears tonight for, for what your word says and for how we can, God, how we can grow. God, I thank you for opportunities. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. My, my gorgeous wife walked amongst you and passed out a handout tonight. I encourage you to uh, follow along with that. I know those that are here, you take wonderful notes. But tonight, I want to talk to you. This is the last of this series. And in-house, and those watching online, over the last nine weeks, this being the ninth week, we've talked about that God is my source. As Annette and I said, and we were enjoying our coffee, we were looking around, and I got emotional. How many's ever gotten emotional when you start to see the blessings of God in your life? And we reminded each other about how good God is, even when we don't see it. Anybody ever been there? That even when we can't see it, God's still working. And scripture's fulfilled that all things work together for good to those that love the Lord. We don't always understand. But I believe tonight, if we will allow this Bible study to have a hold on us, it's not an old cliche, it's, it's the fact. There are some days that we just got to let go and let God be God. I've tried to find the handle, and, and if I do get a hold of the handle, sometimes it's more than I can handle, and I end up making a bigger mess. But you and I, we are our happiest when we let go and let God. And, and I'm not talking about happiness in just something that's happening, but what true joy is. And in the Scriptures... In Psalms 139, verses 23 and 24, it says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. And that's a bold question right there. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my anxieties and see if there is any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting when we become real with ourselves when we start allowing uh, the Holy Spirit to come upon us and evaluate who we are you know, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of circumstances that, that we have put on and, and, and the word is heirs and, and I'm not talking about A-I-R I'm talking about E-R-E -E an air about who we are, that, that sometimes we, we try to convince ourselves. And, and one individual, you'll have to turn me down in the monitors, thank you. One individual told so many lies and, and talked about so many different situations, they couldn't even keep up with it. And then at a certain point, they were trying to present themselves in such a way that they started believing their own lies. The scripture, search me, is where we are able to come before God and say, here I am, God. See, already before we try to convince ourselves or someone else that we're something different, God already knows who we are. He, know, he knew, let me get my words and my brain and everything to work, he knew us before we were ever conceived in our mother's womb. So he knows who we are today. And through life, what we have is that people are always trying to find happiness. 
If I spend a little more time with the right people, I'll find what happiness is. If, if I make myself available in a certain circumstances, I can find what happiness is. And then this one. We can't buy it. The truth about happiness is we can't buy it. Some have spent every dime they have trying to purchase someone else's approval, someone else's ability to make them feel more of worth. But this evening, I need to remind you, it does not matter what social standing we have, if we come from, from uptown or on, like I did on the south side of the tracks. I grew up, in, and I don't talk about that a whole lot, but I grew up in a place it, called Brighton, Illinois. It was just, it, it's just a, a spot on the map in Illinois. But we were so poor when we were growing up, we lived in a portion of Brighton that was known as Jug Town. And the number one reason it was called Jug Town <laughs> was if you put your $10 bill at the edge of the stump, drive around the block, you would come back and you would get you a jug. And that's what it was known. It was two guys running shine out of their own garages. So that's how I was raised. I was raised in a place. But when we start searching for what God is, it's something that you don't seize. But true joy, true happiness seizes you. It gets a hold of you. See, we know that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We, we just don't sing it in songs. We, we know that if we have the joy of the Lord, and the joy of the Lord is not fleeting. It doesn't simply dissipate. It's a continual thing. And when we have the joy of the Lord within us, we have this ability to find what happiness is in a way that many of us search for it. Am I making any sense to you tonight? See, truth about happiness is most moments take us by surprise. By surprise, it takes us. And let me express something to you. It's not your situations, it's not your circumstances. that create happiness in your life. It's who you are within the Lord where real happiness comes from. Traveling overseas, we've been over, I've been overseas over seven times and we went into third world countries and I remember one time that we were there in, in Quito, Ecuador, and we were feeding the less fortunate. And I remember a little boy coming up, and they were eating something that the smell was horrible. There was rice, and then there was whatever this meat was and whatever broth it was. And he ate, and he came back. He was just a little bitty guy. He could have walked underneath the table without bending over, and he come back and moss. Por favor. And I kind of shoot him away. And for those that know who I am, I just kind of said, no, nah, let's. And I reached over and got him another big helping of whatever it was. One of the women that was there helping us feed the poor, the less fortunate, asked us to come and to bless her home. We all loaded back up and we went, we went to her house and the front gate of, of their home was nothing more than some rotted old pieces of, 
of plywood and one by six. They just had it just as best they could. And as we stepped through the gate, her husband and the children, the husband was using a push plow that was turning and the children was breaking up dirt clods with their bare feet. We walked in and as I looked around, I thought, oh, There was a mat, a straw mat that her, her husband, and their three children all slept on. There was a single burner propane uh, plate on top of, of a bottle of, of gas, and it, you know, it was a gippy gas. That was the, what was in that area. They wanted me to sit down in a place of honor, and it was a 1 by 12 with some broomstick handles stuck in for legs, and... You all know that I live by faith, but I couldn't sit by faith. That thing would have caved in on me. I looked over, and their, their clothes closet was nails and pieces of glass stuck into the crack of the block. That's what little bit of clothes they had hung up. Their ideal of running water was when they were flushing the hydrant down the road that they would run down the road with pans and fill them up. I saw a family, a woman that was so filled with joy that in our understanding, our standards, you would ask, how can she be happy? How can she be filled with joy? That day, seeing what took place had such an impression on me. But I came back to the United States and I was mad for six months when people would walk five and six hours one way to come to church and people that lived down the block wouldn't come because their car wouldn't start. So I struggled with that. Just being transparent for those that know, I, I'm very transparent. But many times in our life, those moments take us by surprise. And we can look back and we can step back and we can look and say, how did God, how did he provide? How did he do? See, it is when we are least conscious of ourselves that we are the happiest. I just told you of a story of a woman in Ecuador. She wasn't concerned about what tomorrow was going to hold for her and her family. She found true joy, true happiness as she was in a park serving. Serving the needs of someone else. That scripture says, to know my heart. To understand who I am. God even knows what our anxieties are. He even knows the makeup and what gets us emotionally involved or creates an emotional reversal. So you may ask yourself, how can I really let go? How can I really let go and let God? Because most of you here that I know, you have that mentality that, you know, if I was going to put you, you are a type A individual. Most of you like to take control. Amen? Oh, me. Doesn't matter. But it's only by allowing the searchlight of God's Word to shine without obstruction in our life. You have to allow God to be God in everything. And this passage that we've been studying for the last nine weeks, David has an ability to give God everything in his life. When he met and slayed the giant, he didn't do it under his own power. He didn't do it under his own abilities. He knew what God had already done by, by slaying the lion, the bear. He, he already had that. But what he said was, I don't come but in the name of the Lord. So the first thing that you have to do is let go of your personal desires. 
Let go of your personal desires. Christ himself gave us that illustration when he's there in the garden and he simply says, not my will, but your will. It's not what I want, it's what you want. Letting go of your personal desires means it's not all about you. That's a hard reality for some people. If they're not the center of what brings everyone else joy, I know a few of them, they'll be the center of discourse. They'll create a problem. And they're in the center of it, and they like, they like that feeling of chaos. Isn't it scary to know that there's people out there like that? But as long as it revolves around them, it's okay. One individual in our lives, everything could be going good. And if no one was paying attention to them, the next thing you know, chaos was created. And then you could see the corners of their mouth just turn up a little bit with a little bit of contented smile. But our personal desires have to line up with God. And, and I shared this Sunday just a little bit about, about having the ability to allow our desires to become what God's desires are. See, it says, search me, O God, and know my heart. So when our desires line up with God's desires, we'll start finding the purpose in who we are. We'll find our potential in who we are. And as I state many times, it's, it's about who Christ is in, in me and who I am in Christ. It's who we are in Christ and who he is in me that gives us an understanding of, of knowing that God is searching our heart. It says in Psalms 37, verse 4, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Another translation says, Meditate upon the, the word of the Lord, and He'll give you the desires of your heart. Another translation says... To uphold the law of the Lord. And he will give you the wants of your heart. In 1 Samuel, it says, Now therefore, my Lord, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, since the Lord has held you back from coming to bloodshed and from avenging yourself with your own hand, For the Lord will certainly make for my Lord. Everybody pay attention. Capital L, small L. Capital L is God himself. For, my, for the Lord will certainly make for my Lord an enduring house. Because my Lord fights the battles of the Lord. And evil is not found in you throughout your days. See, there's purposes and reasons behind who we are that we must find our focus being upon who God is. You can't go through life, and these young girls up here may not understand, but the rest of us will. You can't go through life as Doris Day, K. Sarah, Sarah. For everybody over 45, you knew what I was talking about, right? And if you was close, if you're almost 45, you might understand. You can't go through life just thinking and, and singing out whatever will be, will be, because God has a plan for us. And the plan that God has for us is that we become attentive to who He is, that we can find His joy in our life. The next step that David shows us is to let go of your anxieties. Now, it doesn't come on the TV in front of me, but in 1 Peter it says, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. 
There's nothing that you are going through that God does not have an answer to. But Pastor, I'm, I'm dealing with all these emotional things. Yes, and there's days if you could just quiet your mind, get yourself aligned with the promises of God. And you may say, well, Pastor, what are you talking about? How do we do that? Well, you stop. You turn off everything that is chaotic. The whole world would be better without the news. Get off of Facebook. Get off of... You still have MySpace. Get off of MySpace and settle in. Find the scriptures that God has already given you to speak peace over your life. And you sit... And you start to meditate upon his promises. For my own personal life, and I am my greatest testimony of what God has done, so forgive me as I use me as an example. For many years, I went through all this anxiety because I kept asking the question, what if? Isn't that a horrible question? Well, what if this happens? What if that happens? Oh, what if this takes place? And I started to find myself as I grew in the Lord. Before I ever became a pastor, as I grew in the Lord, I started figuring out something for myself. That the preachers I was listening to was right. <laughs> I don't have to worry. I can see something and I don't have to accept it for as I see because I know God has a better plan. There's a purpose in what we do and how God does. And, and, and see, when we start letting go of those things that we are concerned and worry, our anxieties, and we start to calm ourselves on the inside and calm our mind, trusting God, we can rely upon this scripture. Try me and know my thoughts is one translation. The translation I read was anxiety. Anybody have someone in your life that if you just get to talk to them, they'll bring you to a place of reasoning? that they'll just turn you right back around and, and give you understanding. If we would spend more time talking to God, talking to those individuals that encourage instead of those that were looking just to align themselves with us or, or, you know, it's hard to take advice from somebody that's not living a good life. But I know God has a plan, and, and I repeat that often because I, I believe it. And, and for you and I, we have, we have a purpose to follow. It says in Matthew, For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows what you need, that you need, forgive me, that you need all these things, but seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Not taking away from Scripture, but reading from another translation. For these things those that do not believe have sought after. See, if we follow God, we seek after Him, we ask God's will to be done in our life, if we ask God to use us in His will for the kingdom's sake, we will see these wonderful things start to take place. In 1 Samuel, it says, Yet a man has risen to pursue you and seek your life, but the life of my Lord shall be bound in the bundle of the living with the Lord your God and the lives of your enemies, he shall sling out as far from the pocket of a sling. The 
the third thing is let go of your hurtful ways. Let go of your hurtful ways. Well, Pastor, what does that mean? Well, let me give it to you a little, a little more plainer. Quit seeking out your own revenge. Quit trying to figure out how you can tear someone down. Quit trying to plan their own demise. <laughs> Well, Pastor, I'm praying for them. Yeah, you're praying for their wheels to fall off as they're going around a curve, but that's not the way to be praying. We have to let go of those hurtful ways, our hurtful thoughts. And, and the scripture that I read to you in verse 24 says, and see if there is any wicked way in me. If you recall, it started out with, search me, O God. And see if there's any wicked way within me. I think the most hurtful thing we do is choosing not to be honest with ourselves. Another scripture that won't come up, but you know, how many times are we trying to remove a splinter from someone else's eye when we have a six by six in our own? We want to find fault in someone. We want to acknowledge that they're wrong and what we do isn't as wrong as what they do. But the writer says in Psalms 32 and 5, I acknowledge my sin to you. Isn't that an amazing statement? I acknowledged my sin to you. And my iniquity, I've not hidden. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the iniquity of my sin. Many years ago, I knew the greatest individual that I needed to be was not who I thought I was, but what God said I was. I walked away from owning the, the companies, and I became a servant unto the Lord. And Annette and I, we have lived by faith from that day forward. And God's faithfulness is overwhelming. And there's days that I look around and like I said, we got so, Amanda, we got so emotional talking just simply about what God's done. How can we ever repay God for what he's already done by giving us opportunity to life. We look at things and, and, and trying to keep up with, a, uh, hopefully nobody's watching named Jones or our guest is not named Jones, but you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses and the Smiths. You know, trying to you know, buy a bigger car, a better house a faster motorcycle when God just simply says I want you 1 Samuel says 25 and 31 forgive me for not announcing that for Facebook that this will be no grief to you nor offense of heart to my Lord either that you have shed blood without cause or that my Lord has avenged himself but the Lord has dealt well with my Lord. 
then remember your maidservant. And this is what it says in the message. When God completes all the goodness, He has promised my master and sets you up as a prince over Israel. My master will not have this dead weight in his heart and the guilt of a, an avenging murder. And when God has worked things for good for my master, remember me. Remember me. And the last thing tonight. David's steps to letting go and letting God be God was to let God lead. You have to allow God to lead you. Allow God to direct you. If you recall in the book of Acts, where Christ put Saul upon his knees, and he says unto him, Why do you continue to kick against me? Why do you continue to kick? against the Goat? Why do you kick against how I'm trying to direct you? Church, for those watching online, for those in-house, it's so much easier to allow God to lead. It was on a day that my wife and I, we took Jeannie and Ethan to the mall. When they were younger, they had a tendency to just be out in front, not knowing where we're going, what we're doing. You know, they just wanted to be, and so Annette and I were, you know, tripping over them, holding hands, trying to, you know, and, and I finally said, look, if you guys will either walk beside us or behind us, I will get us where we're going. And God reached down and slapped me in the back of the head and said, take that advice yourself. He physically didn't, but it was that kind of mentality. And I thought, wow, all this time, all God wants me to do is either be beside him are behind him and follow, and he will get me. Isn't that, a, isn't that a wonderful revelation? It was that day in, in the middle of St. Clair, St. Clair Mall down in St. Louis. In Psalms 139, verse 24, And lead me in the way everlasting. To lead me in the way. And the last that I want to share with you, I want you to go and mark it. If you're in a digital Bible, go in and highlight it. If you're using a regular Bible, you study. I study out of a, a leather-bound Bible, but uh, go in and mark this. Somewhere you may even have this on the wall on a plaque in a picture. Proverbs 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. Don't lean upon. And this is a free one. Don't allow your feelings to be the directive of your life. Don't allow how you feel at the moment. You know, temporary situations do not, please do not make eternal decisions. 
Don't allow emotions to, to bring on decisions that will have an effect on you forever. We're emotional beings, but, but we have to trust God in the, what He wants for us because God is our source. How many times have you prayed through your feelings? And if God would have answered the prayers at the moment of how you were feeling, it would have been detrimental to you and someone else. To allow God to lead us, direct us, we will truly find joy in our life. Amen. Stand, if you will. Heavenly Father, I just ask tonight, God, that this sinks into our spirit. God, we, we say with words, Lord, that you are our source, but God, let us also speak with our actions. God, let our mind be set upon you. Let, let our heart be, be available to be evaluated, God, by your mighty, mighty word and by the anointing of your Holy Spirit. God, my prayer is that we would grow that we would grow to be more mature within you, Lord, that we would be more knowledgeable, that we would be found faithful. God, that we won't be tossed to and fro like a, a wave upon the sea, but, Lord, we'll be able to walk, God, either beside you or behind you, knowing that you are guiding us and leading us. And, uh, Lord, one day we will stand before you and we will hear well done, thy good and faithful servant. Oh, Heavenly Father, find us faithful. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you for being here tonight.